Hey guys, I've just played my first round game at an open tournament, classical tournament here in Almaty, Kazakhstan. Uh, this is a tournament held by the Frontrunner Chess Club at uh, Almaty. And in the first round, I unleashed my favorite opening. The craziest opening in chess, I think, ever. The King's Gambit. It took some courage and uh, self-talk to uh, decide to play the King's Gambit because obviously it's a bit scary. This opening is considered dubious by modern engines. Black is better. Uh, Stockfish screams at you that you are stupid for playing this. But I like attacking. I like gambits. I like sacrificing. And this was the game that I'm proud of. Uh, I played it at 90% accuracy and mm, it uh, it's worth watching. So let's dive in. So it's the first round and I'm playing uh, mainly by Denislam uh, from Kazakhstan. Uh, he doesn't have any official rating, but uh, he's a kind of a good player. I've seen him defeat uh, 16, 1700 uh, rated players over the board. So he'll definitely get his rating. The problem is that in Kazakhstan there are not too many rated tournaments, so he didn't get the chance to, to get his rating. Also, he's a young player. So I play E4 here. Uh, replies with e5 and I go f4 which is the king's gambit. Here you can uh, decline the gambit but the best way to uh, fight the gambit is to accept it. I think Robert James Fisher said this. So he takes, I go knight f3 and g5. g5 is one of the most principled moves for black. In some variations black goes even g4. In some variations white sacrifices this knight. I've uh, shown you some of my games in this channel where I've done that. In blitz for example this is also very creative but in this game I went for h4 which is a safer move <laughs> if you can use this word safe uh, <laughs> with regards to the king's gambit. As you may know as you may see uh, the engine gives minus 0.5 as its evaluation which means that uh, black is better according to the computer. Black is significantly better. It's a good advantage for black. But I'm not playing the engine, I'm playing a person. And over the boards it's not easy to tackle the king's gambit. I recommend you all check it out. So g4 is one of the main moves. Here I go knight e5 attacking the g4 pawn and here there are many responses for black. If you play uh, the king's gambit you should know them or at least uh, you should know of them and uh, vaguely know, remember what to do. So knight f6 is one of the moves. Queen e7 is the move, d6 is the move, also d5 I think is one of the moves. Basically black can play whatever they want, knight c6 is also not that bad. Uh, but h5 is, uh, is the move that they used to play um, in uh, the old times. I think Kizaritsky played this against uh, Anderson, it was in the 19th century. So these three pawns are used uh, as a whip uh, by the player with the black pieces uh, to punish uh, white for, <laughs> for being so cheeky and playing the king's gambit. But it's objectively not the best way to fight the king's gambit. Already the engine gives equality. So um, the better move is uh, probably knight f6 or d6. Uh, if you play e1, e5 with black, study those moves. So h5, bishop c4. And I already really like my position because I'm attacking f7 two times and asking black some uncomfortable questions. Here black could go here, black could go here, black could go... Um, I think those are the two main moves. Uh, black goes knight h6 and I go d4. The computer likes this move. Well, for obvious reasons, uh, I want to attack the f4 pawn and take it with my bishop. And actually black can't do too much about it. And also, I'm preparing for the d6 move. So, for example, if I castle here, then d6 could be unpleasant because my knight retreats to d3 and now it's blocking this pawn. And this bishop cannot get out and it's already almost winning for black. So d4 is an important move here. Now d6, I have knight d3 and the difference is that this pawn is not on d2. It's already moved to d4. And I... I have a nice position. Here the main move is f3. Giving this pawn back and after g takes f3 there is bishop e7 i in this pawn and the position is very double-edged. I've regained my pawn but my king is extremely weak. Also the computer now gives this as an inaccuracy. It says that knight c6 is better. Well who am I to argue with the computer? I've uh, studied the theory with bishop e7. I think this is the the most common move. 
and on higher depth sizing the computer will, will will recommend it so whatever f3 is the main move you should give the pawn back but my opponent mixed up the move to orders i think he went bishop e7 and already i'm much better surprise surprise in the king's gambit you can get in trouble if you don't know your theory with black so i take the pawn he takes with check but i just block with the pawn and he has to retreat with the bishop uh, the better square would be this one but also not not too uh, too good for black now i take on h5 and now i'm not down a pawn the material is equal but look at my pieces he has to trade i jump in with my knight and the computer already says i'm winning i didn't know that obviously uh, during the game but i was suspecting that my position is much better because look at this rook this is a nasty pin black cannot castle because of this because uh, this knight will will hang so this rook is also eyeing this file it's unusual to see a rook on h5 so early in the game also this knight is great it can jump to d5 for example if this pawn moves then it can jump to g6 or e6 this is a great knight in the center also i'm ready to long castle uh, like after those two moves i'll castle on and what is black doing as i said black cannot castle short that would be suicide even without this threat or uh, to the knight but uh, castling long is also it, it takes it takes time and i have too many threats so let's see how i convert is my advantage so queen e7 knight c3 i defend my pawn on e4 which is logical because it's been attacked. But also this move serves a different purpose. I want to go uh, knight to d5, attacking the queen and the c7 square. The queen has to go to d8 because if the queen goes to d7, then I have knight f6, check forking the king and the queen. So let me redraw those arrows. I want to go knight f to d5 because this knight uh, remains here guarding this pawn. So knight f to d5 attacks the queen. The queen has to retreat to d8. And then I use the other knight to go to b5, knight b5. And already I have two attacks on the c7 pawn. And black will have to defend with knight a6, which is a very ugly looking move. And I'll definitely have a huge advantage after that. So this is why my opponent responds with c6, not allowing what I wanted to do. I just uh, continue my development with queen e2. I add another defender to this pawn and I also want to castle long and destroy my opponent while uh, his, tin, his king is still stuck in the center of the board. Here he goes uh, knight d7. I was thinking that probably in some variations he could go like b5 and I wanted to sack here. I wanted to take and the computer actually agrees. Yeah. The computer says it's a brilliant move. Wow, that's a possibility that could have happened. I was intending to, to take here. And if he takes, I have this knight uh, to d5. Also, this knight could go to d5 as well, but both are good. And uh, this is the only square for the queen, because if the queen goes here, this is a check and a fork, as I said. So the queen has to stay on d8, protecting the c7 square. But then I just, I can just take, for example, can I? I think I can just take and next knight c7 will follow also the computer gives e5 as even a better move but I was calculating knight takes b5 and I thought it's really worth trying I'll definitely have a winning attack in this variation at the cost of just one bishop I'm completely dominating all black's pieces are on the back rank back rank and this knight is vulnerable so yeah this is uh, demolition but that didn't happen he didn't go b5 I was really hoping he would. He uh, developed with knight d7. He makes uh, the best moves or uh, second lines of the computer. So he makes good moves, but uh, this doesn't help because his position is so hopeless. I go e5. I strike in the center. I could have castled here, but I didn't want to give him any brilliant space with knight f6. I take in my rook and uh, untangling the bishop so i decided you know what i'll go e5 i'll disallow him from ever going to f6 with the knight he takes i take and i also open up the d file for further attack and now he goes knight c5 to untangle to go bishop e6 for example and try to castle on but i don't give him that I go e6, I strike in the center, again I blow open the position. Actually the computer here recommends sacrificing the knight on d5, 
Wow, I didn't think about that honestly, but yeah, looks 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 juicy. For example, one variation is takes takes again the attack on the queen forces it to retreat, and then I can go long castles, and this is deadly. I am threatening a check, and then winning a queen. Wow, I didn't didn't think about that at the time, but uh, castle long uh, here also was good. But I didn't want to give him uh, bishop e6, for example, and blocking this e file. So I wanted to blow it open. I want I went e6, sacrificing this pawn because I don't really need this pawn. He takes, and now I castle long, and uh, of course he can take here. I will take here, but his position will just crumble. So uh, this file will be important for my attack in future once I protect this square for example. Also this knight is hanging two times because of my active rook so this is demolition. So he didn't take here, he went for rook d8 trying to exchange some pieces and here I entered some deep calculation. What I was calculating was rook takes d8 check. Now he has to take with the king because if he takes with the queen then this queen no longer sees this knight and I just take it with the rook. So he has to take with the king. And then I wanted to check him from d2, queen d2 check. Um, mm, no, ah, yes, that's, that's what I initially wanted to do. Yeah, and then once he blocks, I wanted to go queen d4 and fork the rook and the knight. But also after I saw this, I saw queen e5, another fork fork in the rook and the knight. And I liked it, but I thought that there might be some counterplay. If black goes bishop here, I check, black goes here, and there are some threats with queen e1, for example, or first queen e3 check, and then after the king goes here, queen e1 could be a checkmate if I'm careless. Of course, it's it wouldn't have happened, but for some reason I decided against this. I decided, you know what, I'll I'll do something safer. I also was calculating actually in some variations rook takes c5. I thought it also should be winning. Turns out it's... Oh, uh, I was calculating rook takes d8 first and then rook c5. That's what I was calculating. Turns out it's not good. I was calculating it, but it's good that I didn't do this. So the idea is that if I take here, I take and he cannot take because this would be a fork. But he has other ways to protect here. For example, he has queen c5, bishop takes, and he has various checks, like queen g1 check. And uh, I spent lots of time calculating this and I didn't like it. So in the end I decided, you know what, I'll just win a knight. I, I went rook h1, which is, the computer says it's a mistake, but it's still winning because I'm putting more pressure on this uh, h6 knight. And I'm also uh, just outright winning it because if the queen protects, this is what he did. I take this knight and I'm up a piece now. Uh, he had different options. He, I was calculating bishop takes c4, queen takes, and then he has this check. I go here and he can, well, he cannot really take here because too many pieces of his are hanging, but he has some ways to try to hold on like b6 and I cannot take here because I have this backrank issues and I'll get mated, but I'll take this later and it's still completely winning. Knight c2 e2 is a computer recommendation. I doubt that I would go for this, I would, would do something more active, maybe knight d3 blocking this file. Uh, I don't know, something like that, but it's still winning, but that would have been better for black if we compare it with what happened in the game. He went with the queen to this square. He wanted to untangle, obviously, I understand. He wanted to go knight f5, and finally the spin is broken because the queen now protects the h8 rook. But I just exchange, and here I have multiple sway ways to win. I can, for example, take here and enter into an endgame. I was calculating this, this, uh, now this, rook takes d1, takes, 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 and I'm up a piece in this endgame. I could have gone for this. This is the best that black can get. And obviously it's winning. But I wanted to win in a more convincing style. So I decided rook takes f5 is not necessary. I can just take the bishop. The problem for him is if he takes, I take with the check. And if he goes here, I mate him. Because the bishop and the queen form this battery. And if he drops back here, well, still I 
I have maybe not a force in mate, but but I have the win. Rook e5, for example, and he can't do anything. If he checks me from the back rank, I just block and still this is devastating for him. So he cannot take. He wanted to, to initiate some counterplay. He took on g3, attacking my queen. And the problem is, although I can give him a um, discovered check, double check, like knight c7, checking him with both my queen and my knight, and he cannot take my queen because it's not the only piece checking him. But I, I don't have an immediate knockout blow. He can go here, for example. Yes, it's still winning, but why go for these complications? Also, the same can be said about this double check because he'll just go king f8 and nothing special here. So I just retreat with my queen to e1. I'm still threatening to check him. He still cannot take me because I will checkmate him in the same way. So basically, I'm up already two pieces at this moment. So my, I, my main uh, goal here is not to blunder anything. He goes queen h6 check thinking that, wow, I'm checking him, but he forgot that I can check him back with knight g5. It's a discovered check, which is at the same time blocking his check. Beautiful geometry. So he has to retreat with the king. And now I just uh, create some luft for my king with b3, because I want to take his knight on g3, but that would fail to queen h1. And uh, these uh, two pieces create devastating mating attack on my king. This would be tragic. So I obviously uh, didn't take here. I created some loot for my king. Now I'm threatening to take. He went b6, attacking my rook, and here I just took his knight, uh, exchanged this uh, active knight for my rook, and went queen f4, thinking that this is over. But still, my opponent made a couple of moves. So I'm threatening to take here this is a checkmate. He goes here, I take, he, he go, drops back, and I go back. Now I'm threatening knight f7 with a royal fork, forking all his house. He goes queen f8, which is a mistake, but still everything loses already. And I give him a check. And here I missed, I actually missed mate in two here. I got carried away. I checked him with my knight on f7, and he resigned here because... If he goes here, for example, I can take here with check, discover check, I'm already up three pieces. I can take the queen next if I want uh, and win, or I can checkmate him in several moves. So here he resigned after knight f7, but actually I had a quicker mate, a very instructive one. So here I checked him on e5. He has the only response with queen g7 because my bishop and my knight restrict him. And here I have this pendulum swing queen h2, checking him, and he has no moves because this is protected. So he has to give up his queen, and this is checkmate. So I missed checkmate in two at the end, but still I won the game after knight of seven. He resigned. So this is why I love playing the king's game. It, lots of creative variations occur on the board, and not only on the board, but in my mind where, when I'm calculating them. Uh, I didn't see everything, frankly, and... Uh, uh, nobody can see all the variations, but uh, what I saw and uh, what I implemented on the board um, already suffice to say that it was worth trying this gambit. So I'm uh, on one out of one after round one. Tomorrow I'll play two rounds. It will be exciting. I hope I will get the chance to meet uh, the international master who is number one seated in the tournament. He's uh, rated over 2300. Uh, obviously much higher rated than me, so I'll try to, to, to get to him. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.